Hello YouTube, it's been a little while. Welcome to today's video, Your Camera is Not a Copier. Uh, it's been a little while since last we met. I've uh, painted this wall behind me, so now I'm shooting on this wall, the wall behind my camera, uh, I mean my computer, instead of uh, the wall on the opposite side of my desk. So I'll do a studio tour of this uh, eventually, pretty soon here, and uh, you can look forward to watching that video in the next little bit. Anyway, on to today's topic, your camera is not a copier. So here's what I mean by that. Your camera, any camera, whether it's your, your phone, uh, a camera like this, any kind of camera, whether it's a $100 camera or a $100,000 camera, does not record reality exactly as it exists when we look at it. So here's what I mean by that. Um, no matter what we do, no matter what lenses we use or cameras, the camera doesn't see things exactly as you and I do. So that's got some freedom and I love that and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. So here's how our cameras are not copiers. First of all, they're not 3D. Our cameras are 2D so it takes this world that has depth to it and smushes it to just two dimensions, width and height. It simulates depth with, uh, with focus a little bit, but it's mostly just 2D. Uh, so that's another, that's first way it's different. Second way it's different than reality is um, our cameras have a different and reduced dynamic range, which means it can't see whites that are as bright and darks that are as dark as, as our eyes can, especially when they're in the same scene. So if it's some, someone sitting in front of a window, when you take a photo of them, there'll be a silhouette. Whereas when you're looking at them, uh, you can see them and, and what's outside. So um, technical limit number two of cameras not being a copier. And number three, and maybe the biggest one and somewhat the most powerful, is that our cameras don't have peripheral vision. So when you and I are out looking at the world and we're looking at whatever we're going to take a picture of, we see this, our main part of our vision, but we also see the peripheral, the 180-ish degrees uh, which is all the stuff around the thing that we're pointing our camera at. So our camera has a frame. And when you take a photo, the world doesn't exist outside of this. Uh, there's nothing out here. It's only inside. And that's really, really powerful. Uh, by choosing what you put in this box and how you arrange this box, that's what lets you, the photographer, decide what the world is and there's a lot of power and creativity in that so that's one of the things i love the most and one of the many many things i love about the fact that your camera is not a copier so here's what else that happens when your camera is not a copier um you don't have to be as technical necessarily uh if i'm not trying to reproduce exactly what things are then um you know i don't have to get exactly the right settings to uh, mimic what it looked like i don't have to worry as much about gear i don't need the latest gear the most expensive gear um i love gear but uh there's a lot of freedom in not stressing about the gear itself using uh this as the most important part of your gear your brain your creativity your heart your experiences, all those things that help you tell stories with photos besides just making it a copy of what the way reality was. Uh, another thing I love about uh, the camera not being a copier is now that I'm not trying to reproduce exactly what was, I can capture, hopefully, the beginning of the way it felt to me. So I can add a layer of emotion, a layer of feeling, a layer of stories into my art I'm creating, this creative process that isn't exactly real. There's a lot of freedom there. Uh, I love that. So for me, my camera becomes, because I'm not a... I'm not a mechanical artist. I, I don't draw very well. I don't, uh, <laughs> when I put stuff together, there's always extra parts, even with Ikea stuff. Um, so uh, the freedom to have this digital tool that interprets what's up in here and here and then lets other people see it uh, is super powerful for me. Um, 
So um, it becomes my paintbrush. It becomes my my guitar, uh, my lump of clay. Because is my camera now, and and I'm so grateful for that because those other tools don't work for me. And I think for most people, photography, whether you're using your phone or a camera, becomes a really accessible art form of creativity and expression of telling stories, expressing feelings that um, all of us have often on our in our pockets so i want to help people explore that understand it uh, leverage it uh, try new things that they normally wouldn't do one of the ways that um, this freedom to not capture exactly what was happening uh, gives me freedom is uh, now I have freedom to play with exposure. I don't have to reproduce the light exactly as it existed. I can add or take away or do a little bit of both. Try different things. Experiment. Uh, I don't have to just stand at my normal height where I look at the world. I can get closer to things or farther away or, or try and get up taller or be down lower. I put my camera in a place using composition that um, is a place I don't normally put my eye, so it gives me lots of freedom. And then last, I have freedom in what I do in post-production, in, in software, how I maybe interpret colors, interpret the light, uh, maybe change the composition, uh, finish the story uh, to make it mine, to make this photo, this image I captured of a real thing, something that is uniquely connected to me, and then hopefully other people um, we'll see it and, and appreciate something new and different as well. So let's sh look at some examples and talk about uh, how this works uh, visually. Uh, these are just a couple of examples uh, and I'll show you the photo and then I'll show you reality. So here we go. So let's take a look at some of the, some photos, examples of all this, how this works, how you don't have to record exactly what was there. Uh, and when you don't, then you have the opportunity to create something new and unique, an interpretation of your own of what was actually there. So we'll start with this image of um, the clouds, these clouds and the grass. And it kind of feels like maybe, I hope it feels like you're out, uh, you know, somewhere a little ways away from a city, maybe even quite far away. And in the, it's it's in a parking lot of a shopping center in, in Sammamish where I live. Uh, so we've got a, a T-Mobile and a Jersey Mike subs and a nail salon and a Chipotle. But, but that's not the star of this photo. I mean, I'm standing there and that's what I see, but that's not what I want to show. So I'm interpreting reality. My camera is interpreting reality anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and reframe reality to be the dramatic clouds and the grass just minimize it, hide the things I don't want, use that frame to tell a different story that um, is more expressive of how I'm feeling and uh, what I want people to feel when they see this image, or hope they feel. Uh, gonna do a similar thing here with this image of the, the tree silhouette at sunset. Uh, so watch this uh, sunset happen for, uh, for quite a while and uh, about 40 minutes and uh, as it evolved this the shape kind of happened around the tree it kind of started framing the tree and uh, when i got back and looked at the photo uh in software in lightroom i was thinking about stranger things i think i'd been watching it so when i was processing the photo editing the photo i went to here so i accentuated those blues and made the colors a little more rich and vibrant uh i told a different story with light and color than the original did so i'm using the software to help me add some emotional layers to this photo that that are, are lacking a little bit in the original which was still dramatic and, and wonderful but um, I just wanted to add some layers so that I have the freedom when I don't think of my camera as a copier to do this kind of thing and even more so for example even choosing one of the ways you can choose to not have your camera be a copier is on a in a photo like this is to use uh, a very dramatic kind of light, it's like at sunset here, versus going in the middle of the afternoon. I mean, it's still dramatic clouds, but it doesn't have the same emotional contact in, content impact of that dramatic uh, cloudscape with the with the light and the color. 
Uh, I mean, this is nice. It's pretty. It's 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 lovely. Uh, but it's it, even this isn't is kind of hiding some stuff. I'm framing intentionally. Uh, if you're standing there, this is what you'll see. You'll see the the parking lot for the the Sammamish uh, Police Department right below that tree. Um, so that's not part of the story I want to tell in this image. Um, I want to be more emotional, more dramatic, more interpretive. Okay, so I've got one more example to show you, and that uh, is, is more, more one of the more recent photos I've taken of a, a misty sunrise as the weather around here in winter was changing from a cloudy, I mean, a rainy pattern to a couple days of clearing. So we'll get some fog and mist in the in the morning. Uh, so this photo, uh, what you don't see, is that I'm on top of a, a five-story uh, park and ride garage uh, to get this image and. Um, it was nice and moody. I really liked how quiet it was. Um, but when I, again, got back to the computer and wanted to uh, show a little bit more about how that morning felt, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice change of pace to get up intentionally a little bit early and, and just go out and take some images and enjoy the quiet of that morning. So when I edited it, this is what I did. Uh, I went with some more color went a little uh, with the purples and pinks, went kind of pastel with it. In the lower left and right corner, remove those light poles that aren't doing anything for this story. So yes, it's an interpretation. It's not uh, the camera in copier mode. This is me being intentional about adding a layer of uh, emotion through the edit. Uh, so that's one of the most powerful things you can do with once you realize your camera doesn't need to be a copier and it isn't a copier is you get to add uh, feelings and emotion that ha that uh, are reflective of how you are feeling about the photo or how you want other people to see as they look at your photo. So I hope that was helpful uh, to think of your camera not as, as a copier. You're not exactly duplicating reality and there's so much freedom in that. That's where the fun is. That's where you get to play with the frame and decide what goes in here. This is the world of your photo and it's yours and you get to decide what goes in there. So I hope you have a lot of fun experimenting with that, trying new things. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please love to hear your comments. Please feel free to leave those uh, below. If you have some photos you want to share, uh, maybe a link to a website or your uh, Instagram, please leave those in the comments. I'd love to check out your photos and, uh, and see what you're doing. Uh, follow along on your journey to more interesting photos. Um, please subscribe to this channel. That helps me out a lot. Share this channel with, uh, with folks who are also exploring what uh, photography and how they're interpreting the world. Uh, since they know, too, that the camera is not a copier, I'd love to have you share this video, and I really appreciate your doing that. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, we'll be doing an, uh, an office tour and a bag tour, what's the gear I have, and a whole lot more stuff around uh, looking and working towards taking more interesting photos. So until I see you again on YouTube, have fun taking photos.